What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files. I am your host, Nick, joined by the uh, dynamic team of Chrissy, Allie, and Amanda. How is everyone doing today? And Travis is here, recently engaged. Congratulations, Mr. Romance himself, our sound engineer, fixing the mic. Everyone good? Great? Everyone's fine? Yeah. I wanted to ask you, are you a member of SAG? Yes. Should I join? Should we be members together? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Do you? I feel like a professional actor now. Congratulations. Was that a nice flex? I also got an apartment, so we're on the up and up. Great. <laughs> I started a new job as a matchmaker, and I love it. What do you mean? I, I'm a matchmaker now. How does that work? How does one become a matchmaker? So I work with clients, and I do like an intake call with them, get a sense of what they're looking for, and then I go through both like we have our own database, but then we also have external recruiting efforts. And so it's so cool because I just get to spend like hours talking about to people about like what they look for in a partner and a lover, and it's just like a fascinating insight into human and condition and dating. It's did you start start already? Yeah, I had did. I have four clients. Have you set anyone up yet? I'm in the process. So we have to screen anybody who we want to set our clients up with. Like we have to screen them on a separate call. So I have some screenings booked for the end of this week. It's what happens. Like, how do you get rate? Like how, like a, a performance review, like how, how are you reviewed? Like what if, does someone need to get married within the first year on the job or how, like how do, how does one define success? Well, there's, so at the end of a date, clients will fill out a feedback form from uh -huh. the date. So if you set people up on a lot of five star dates or it just there's sort of like a bunch of like data things that they keep track of, like how quickly you're able to find uh, clients for people. And it's also just about kind of someone's own personal experience. So if a client thinks you're not doing a good enough job, they can say, peace, I want a new matchmaker. And do you have women, men, clients, both? both. I have both. OK, I'm going to ask more questions about this job as it as it continues. We have a great episode for you. Uh, the wonderful and very talented Olivia O'Brien is with us today. Uh, and uh, we talk a lot, as we always do, about relationships. Uh, she is a young, talented, and very honest uh, person. And uh, by her own admission, so much of her music is inspired by her own personal life and relationships that she's had. And we have a fun conversation about her career and her music and her relationships and all the things that... Uh, We've learned a long way. Um, so thanks for listening. Uh, I know you will love this episode. We are back, uh, as always, with you on Mondays for our Ask Nick episode. So if you are tuning in to listen to Olivia, welcome. Uh, we do a lot of fun things like we recap The Bachelor when it's on on Tuesday. We also have a Q&A episode called Questions with Nick where people call in and tell about their relationship stories and problems. I give them insight and hopefully help fix their problems. So... Uh, be sure to check that out. If there's nothing else, let's get to Olivia. Olivia, thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about pimple popping. Mm -hmm. um, I think Again, thanks for coming on. I, uh, I was telling you uh, when uh, you came in here that uh, I've been on TikTok and I was just kind of on your page through the For You page and you had one of these kind of relatable relationship things and it was... And then I was talking to my girlfriend about you and she's a big fan of your music. And then I was listening to your lyrics. I know I'm not your target demo lyrics. I've always liked like women, like I've always, I was a big Britney Spears. Okay. I am a big Britney Spears fan, Free but like, uh, call her maybe. I'm sorry. I like it. I don't. I, so I, it's, it's honest music about relationships and we obviously talk a lot of, about it. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Again. Um, so you, is that true? Like you, I mean, music wise, you obviously have been writing and writing songs and making music for, for some time now. When you started uh, doing it, was it always about relationships? What was always your motivation even when you started? Or did that start when you started dating and, and getting into kind of romantic relationships? Well, I've kind of been like, I was, I popped out of the womb and was immediately like flirting with everyone and oh, okay. like obsessed with boys. Um, and 
yeah my mom always tells me stories about when i was like literally two years old and we'd, she'd bring me to like weddings and i would like go up to all the hot guys and like sit on their laps and like she said she <laughs> knew that i was going to be like a lot to handle as i grew up and i was like you're right um but i i just wrote like i i used to write songs when i was like seven i went to montessori school so it was very like we did like musical you things went to all montessori the time montessori school yeah until like second grade and so it was very creative and I had all these, no I found all these notebooks in my like mom's garage of all these songs I wrote when I was little. They're not good. I was like seven. So, <laughs> but they're all about boys pretty much. So I think I've just kind of always uh, wanted to write about that. It's been the, like other than my mental illness, it's been the one thing that inspires my music the most, I feel like. So what is your what mental illness? What do you all talk about? All of them. About? Every you, single one. What's <laughs> All the anxiety no um no. yeah i i recently got diagnosed with ocd i didn't know okay. i had it until like sometime last year um when i started going to therapy again but i've always had i had depression since i was like 11 um and how yeah. did you come to be diagnosed what was like maybe something that you discovered like if someone's listening and wonder if they have it because i feel like there's sometimes there's a lot of these kind of uh, diagnosis that people wonder and they don't know and what was the thing that kind of made you realize that you finally with OCD were, yeah um well I knew that I always had anxiety and I didn't realize OCD is like it's an anxiety disorder mm -hmm. but I, people always think of it as like oh someone who has to keep their space super clean and organized and like that's uh, that's the stereotypical yeah. OCD thing and I've never been necessarily the most organized or clean person I mean not I'm not like disgusting, but no, I, I never keep I my room perfect. Yeah. I've wondered if I sometimes am and I'm definitely not that I have a friend who would, he would like, everything has to be perfect. Yeah, perfect. And I actually used to like fuck with them. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> and, but I was, I'm wondering, yeah. And, and please continue. Like, what was it? What does it mean? Uh, what's not true about the stereotypes and, and what, I mean, how do you suffer from it? It can be true. Like there are people that are like that. That's where the stereotype came from. There's some truth to it, but it also it's obsessive compulsive. So just having like weird uh, things that you obsess over that you can't control in your brain. Like I had a really, I, I used to have really bad death anxiety. I still do sometimes, but like I would lay awake at night just like thinking about all these things that I can't control about everyone I know and love dying and me dying and what happens, blah, blah, blah. And I would like have panic attacks every night before I would go to sleep and I wouldn't be able to sleep. And uh, I also am really, the one thing that is kind of stereotypical OCD, I guess, is I'm really weird about my bed. Like I, if someone comes into my room and like sits on my bed, I like, I have like a, I can't do it. It like gives me so much anxiety or like, and I'm not, I'm not super, super organized, but if someone comes in and touches things in my room, I get upset. Like I, like, a, like, and it's not like I get angry. It's this weird feeling of like, sure, please don't do that. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. But so. your bed though, how do you introduce, I mean, literally a guy into I don't your bed? invite men to my house. I go always go to them. Interesting. Yeah. I don't like people in my space. Boyfriends? Well, I've had like two boyfriends in my life. Okay. Well, and how did that work? Well, they would come over and it would be, it was fine. One of them was like, first like actual boyfriend that I had I was like 17 and he was 24 okay and okay. I it's really like it was kind of looking back I'm like that was not good cool. um and I was like it, we only dated for like a month and I and I went on tour and I was like I can't see this every time we would hang out he was like a club promoter and I was like, oh God, my life fuck okay yeah it's he fine. was like a club promoter we've I was, all done some yeah. shit where we look back and be like, i was ah. i was 17 like whatever but i he would we would go to the club and we would get drunk and we decided we were dating when i was drunk in the club okay and then i would break up with him and then i would go out to that club and we would like get back together when i sure. was drunk and this is a 24 year old man like it's so and like that's so not okay whatever but he would like come over every once in a while after like club hours and we would just like fall asleep in my bed or whatever and then like wake a, up and uh, um what, like what's the club what club was it hide oh i was i was gonna guess the other one what, one oak one oak yeah. oh, oh god um, i mean they're all the fucking same shit basically that the, the, the club promoter story of, of is a, a common story but that's okay you yeah. let lesson learned and then your yeah. second boyfriend um he he would sleep actually i never even went to his house i feel like i i whoever has the power in the relationship is the person that like you go to their house. That's what I realized. Like I had all the power in that relationship and I never went to his house. He always came to me, but it was like, he knew so his wait, place. Like he would sit in his power in the relationship. 
Like it, whoever's house you are consistently going to, they have all the power. It's interesting. I've never thought about that. It's oh, it's been at least always true for me. It's also like really insightful. I don't a lot of people I talk about power a lot in, in relationships, but it's one thing people don't talk about or honest with because even any even healthy relationships, there's power always exists. And it's a kind of a something we struggle with early on. And even when you're in a healthy relationship, the power can change a little bit yeah. like you can you able to sometimes feel it, especially the worst part is when you feel like you have the power. And then one day you wake up and you feel a little less powerful. And even maybe that's okay. But it's interesting you say that. I think you're probably right. Yeah. The whoever whoever has the power, it's that their house. Is it because they're lazy? No, I don't. I, I, it also like there are definitely instances where it's like, okay, if one person has like five roommates and one person lives alone, you're obviously sure. going to go to that person's house. But like I just think about consistently how it's been with me. Like the guys that I've really, really liked that didn't want to date me, like I would always go to their house. They never came over. So when you thought about that, is that something you thought about after the relationship was over and you kind of reflected on it? Or were you aware of that power dynamic when you were dating them? Um, I think it's just something I've, over the years I've just come to realize and me and my friends have talked about it because like we all kind of have the same types of relationships and like the same kind of asshole guys and so it's just kind of been the same patterns over and over again we kind of notice like oh well you that happens with you and this happens with me that's crazy this happened with him and him and him so do you like again because like when you write your music it's really insightful it's really kind of reflective and I, I guess as a songwriter you're kind of prone to do that. I give like a lot of relationship advice on the show. People always ask me, do I take my own advice? Do I apply it in the moment? I do try. Do you try as well? No. How does that work in, in theory? <laughs> I you're, you're, honestly, you don't. No. I try. I mean, I'm 21. So sure. I, part of me is like, I do, I, like a relationship sounds like it could be nice and fun and cool and whatever with the right person. But then part of me is like so terrified. That's why like every time I do get into a real relationship, I'm always the one that ends it because I'm like, I don't like, I don't want this right now. I want to be, I want to be free until I meet the person that like I is really worth like putting that time. I don't want to say wasting my time with, but like putting that time and energy into that. Cause I work a lot and I like to have fun and I like to go out and I like to, flirt with random people and be crazy and I don't want to not enjoy my life right now while I am still young and able to do all this stuff so I'm like kind of afraid to take my own advice so I go for guys I know are gonna be assholes to me so that I can one write songs about it and two uh we're not gonna fucking date so it's a Fine. So you like you're you're almost actively dating not to find a boyfriend. Yeah, but then I still I still get hurt by it though. It's it's sure. really you're shocking. Human. It's like I know, but it's like I'm so self aware. Like I know exactly what I'm doing. I know he's gonna be hooking up with other girls. I know he's gonna like say whatever he wants to my face and do whatever he wants behind my back. But I still st there's still like a part of me that is a little bit like oh, but maybe like maybe he really maybe he really likes me. And then I like still get hurt when they do the exact thing that I signed up for essentially. Do you think it's your <laughs> ego or do you think it's your genuine interest in them? I think I'm just, I don't know. I really, I'm just fucked. I think you're going to be <laughs> just fine. <laughs> like you're actively dating and don't want a boyfriend, but it's, still, but like, I, you know, this is something that's very relatable to like a lot of people. Yeah. And like I'm sure like if I met someone that I was like, holy shit, like this person is like, I will never find someone better. And like, this is, the person for me, then I would fully, I'm sure I would date them, but I just haven't met that person, I guess. And there's guys that I've like really, 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 really liked and in the back of my mind wanted to date, but I go into it with kind of the mindset that I just explained of like, mm -hmm. it's not going to work out, but like I probably would want it to if it did, but it's not going to. And I know that. When it comes to recovery, performance, immunity, and feeling less stressed, sleep is everything. And I actually found the answer to better sleep in a delicious, healthy cup of cocoa. It's the Dream CBD powder with Beam, and it's changed the way I sleep. With Dream powder, you're getting more than just quality shut-eye. You're providing your body with sleepy vitamins and minerals. Dream is essentially a guilt-free, sleepy-induced warm cup of organic cocoa or organic cinnamon without any calories or added sugar. And there's proof in the powder. After taking Dream, 99% of people feel an improvement in the quality of their sleep, and 97% felt more energized the next day. Those are results. I love to hear. 
If you want better sleep and better days delivered every month, subscribe to Dream for the awesome perks like free delivery and 35% off your first month. Plus, you can pause or cancel anytime. Subscribe today and you'll save 35% by going to beam.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is B-E-A-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Or go to beam.com and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. Sweet dreams. Hey, do you like alcoholic drinks but also want to take care of your body? It doesn't even seem like it's impossible, but it is with Vizzy, V-I-Z-Z-Y, Vizzy, Vizzy, Vizzy. Hard seltzer crafted with antioxidant vitamin C. It's truly amazing. I love, I can't, I love vitamin C. Can't get enough of it. It's got 30 times more vitamin C per cup than an orange. 30 times more vitamin C per cup than an orange. Amazing. Comes in amazing flavors like pineapple, mango, black cherry, lime, strawberry, kiwi, my favorite, blueberry, pomegranate, pap- papaya, passion fruit, watermelon, strawberry. The list goes on. There's a blackberry and lemon, also really tasty. Vizzy is also launching its own lemonade hard seltzer in four delicious flavors, watermelon, peach, raspberry, and strawberry with the same antioxidant vitamin C. So get your vitamin C on. Upgrade your hard seltzer today with Vizzy. Find out where you can purchase Vizzy at go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is VizzyHardSeltzer.com com slash v-i-a-l-l must be 21 or older do you do you like the chase i saw on a tiktok you did about you know your guy what was it like this is my man oh, yeah. and <laughs> and so he funny. was very and what i liked about because like a lot of i'll get a, i'll go i get question all the time and and somewhere in their question uh and you know the girl will say, well, he told me I didn't want to date, but, and then they'll give me all these other things he said and did and all these kind of breadcrumbs that made him like confused. But I'm like, he literally told you he didn't want to date. And you were, you mentioned that in the TikTok, And yet that was like, what do you, what, what do you think it is about like, well, either you or, or other women who uh, will hear a guy say, we're never, this isn't going to happen. And yet, you stick around is it because you are honest about like what's going on or do you think it's a challenge or what do you think is causing that to happen well i think it's just like the human condition to want what you can't have it's everything with with dating with jobs people tell you you can't have something and you immediately want it even if you didn't want it before and if you already did want it before and you are attracted to this person you really like them and they tell you oh no we can't date but like we can still hang out then in the back of your mind you're like it's almost a competitiveness it's like oh well he doesn't he doesn't want to date me but he still wants to hang out like i'm gonna convince him to fall in love with me and like i'm gonna do this never fucking works obviously but yeah i i think that's just what it is you just it, you can't help it okay yeah you also mentioned on a TikTok uh that you realized you called yourself old, which I, I am old, <laughs> kind of funny, but um, that you realize that everyone else has had their first love and then that you, you won't be anyone's first love was kind of the, yeah. Well, I've, I've had relationships and like, I've been like fully like obsessed with guys before, like just would drop anything and everything for them. But those are always the guys I never dated. Mm-hmm. And then the guys that I do date, they may be like really, really into me and I'll be like semi into them, but not enough to be like, oh my God, I'm in love with this person. Like, I've, I've never had one of those relationships that like in high school when people date, it's like their first love and it's so special because they think that they're never gonna find it ever again. And it's so exciting because it's the first time it's ever happened. So they're just like so obsessed with each other and it's so dramatic. I never had that with anyone ever because I didn't finish high school. I moved to LA, I started hanging out with all these fucking asshole guys and then whatever has happened has happened. But I I never had that experience where it's like kind of like a mutual thing. Like I've been really into guys and guys have been really into me and we've dated and whatever, but I've never had that. An obs- okay. Like a mutual obsession kind of thing. Do you want, like, if you could fast forward, whenever, whenever it is you meet a guy thinking about that, do you want, do you wish you were someone's f- first love? Like, do you care about that? It's weird. I feel like I have these ideas in my head based off of just like shit I've seen in movies and like people I know talking about all their life experiences. And then I feel like, Oh, I'm missing out on something. But then it's like, am I missing out on something? Because I got to go have fun while they were in their little weird relationship that didn't work out. So what's the point of that? But then I guess you learn lessons, but then it's like, are those lessons even worth it? Because you're like 16. I don't know. I really truly, (laughs) my thoughts are all over the place. So I think that's part, maybe part of the problem, but it's really, it's an interesting, um, I, I like I said, it's an interesting, relatable thing because we, like I like that you said that we kind of have these fantastical dreams and fantasies about 
uh, like how we want love to work out for us or, and being someone's first, whether it's you're losing your virginity or your first love. And we almost kind of waste a lot of energy trying to make that happen as opposed to like, just genuinely focusing on finding a real connection. Yeah. I asked my audience once and I was kind of surprised by the answer if they actually, oh, let me ask you, do you, do you judge people for having a lot of exes? You meet a guy and he's like, yeah, I've had like six or seven girlfriends. I've been in love three times. Like your subconscious. Does your subconscious kind of be like, oh, I don't know. Yes, but only because I am so picky with people that I actually like, oh, I mean, I guess I've, I've dated people that I wasn't super, super into, but like actually fully dating and having like a serious relationship with someone would take them being like so fucking amazing and me being so compatible with them. And I don't think that that many people exist in the world that are that compatible with me that I would be that into. I just don't genuinely like a lot of people. That's why when I do like someone, I fucking obsess over them because I it's it feels so rare to me. So people that can just date a bunch of people and commit themselves to a bunch of different people kind of scares me. I feel like maybe they're just very uh, yeah. basic and don't have a lot of individuality or unique thoughts. So they just can get along well with everyone and their personality is mild and doesn't rub people the wrong way and everyone likes them, which also concerns me because if everyone likes you, then you probably suck. Yeah, or, or you're not yourself. Yeah. If everyone likes you, you definitely don't know how to be yourself. True. Um, but on the flip side, if you have a handful of exes you've uh it's like test driving you know yeah like but it depends on how i guess it depends on how serious these relationships were and like guys that i like <laughs> i don't know if they've necessarily had a lot of exes but they've had sex with every single person i've ever met in my life so <laughs> okay. that's la so i've just come to it's like i just have to accept it at this point but more more the relationships of like you know i had a couple of valentine's days with a girl or a or, couple okay that's already too crazy so you don't only, so a long-term relationship is a negative i mean just if imagine the, all the practice he's getting to not fuck up with you i guess it depends on like also how old they are like if they're constantly in a new relationship then it's sure. concerning but like if they're waiting until like if, at least if there's like a few months in between and they like are dating around and then they find the person that then they're with that. But it, I guess it really, it really depends on the situation, but it does, it does kind of scare me if someone's always like in love with a new person. Yeah. Cause then you're like, what's makes, how can you trust their feelings towards you? And also like, how are you falling actually deeply obsessively in love with that many people? You're obviously like just insane. <laughs> or there's something wrong with you. Like, how are you doing that? That's not real. That's like, they, they must be idealizing the person and falling in love with the idea of people versus the actual person because you can't just continuously fall deeply and obsessively in love with a person every fucking month. Like, it's 100%. Do you think a lot of people do that? Yeah. I think some people. It, it's, I've definitely been with guys that are like that for sure. Or you think guys do as much oh. as women? Yeah. Not as much. There's different types. There's different types of guys like I have that I have dated personally. I, there's type A and type B. Type A, they are the asshole guys that I'm obsessed with that give me an inch and I take a mile. Like they I, they tell me like that I look pretty one time and then they like hook up with someone else. But I'm like, oh, but he told me like I was pretty. So like he obviously is in love with me. And I, <laughs> that's who I write all my songs about. That's uh, who inspires me. And then type B is the guys that are obsessed with me and they treat me so well and they're so nice but they're just kind of like like they do that to probably every girl that they end up liking like it's not actually like they're just kind of almost not weak but like kind of weak <laughs> like they just yeah, like I and mean, they let me boss them around like don't do that why are you doing that and also so they don't that's have their my own fault, boundaries but, well yeah, they, i don't know it's, it's i guess it's your th fault in the sense of well no i don't think it's your fault because if we're talking about a romantic relationship in a romantic relationship, like you're not, you're not their mother or their caretaker, right? Like their friend or their mom would be like, Hey, you're supposed to like, don't let her talk to you that way. Yeah. Right. But in a relationship, like you have to have your boundaries. He has to has have his. And if you're these nice guys, do you think that I saw actually something today? Like, I and mean, we've talked about this before, but like people say, Oh, nice guys finish last and you're last and you're kind of describing a nice guy, but there's gotta be something about like an insecurity that they have. Like, 
kind of like you point is they're not setting boundaries. What's causing them not to send boundaries? Is it the fear that like, if you if they say no to you, you'll leave. But it's it's not even necessarily nice guys. Because who's to say that like n- nice is also subjective. It's sure. like people can to your face be so nice and do all these things for you, but they might have their weird ulterior motives, or it's based off their own insecurities, or it's just some weird and and it can feel fake when someone is. That's why I'm not into like super romancy, gushy, gushy, gross things like that because i'm like this is fake like i don't f- i would never fucking say that to you like stop don't do that right now like i know you're not whatever so people that do that aren't i don't necessarily think of them as nice guys and then there are the like the guys that are kind of players they can still be nice people like i end up being friends with most of the people that are an asshole to me when like i i don't really care at the end of the day all is fair and love more whatever do you but they can be really 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 nice to me and compliment me and be great and they just aren't the right partner and they don't want to date me and that's that doesn't mean they're not a nice guy so nice guys finish last it's like yeah if you're being weird (laughs) i yeah i think it's more like do you think it's respectful guy like they're not they're they're, it's like they should replace respectful well they shouldn't replace respectful because like nice guys might finish last because maybe it's not a nice thing and they're not setting boundaries but like the the asshole guys do you find them while they might still be nice to you in moments do you think they're respectful like do you think they do you feel like you, their respect towards you never a bad time to learn anything never it's never too late to become an expert in whatever you want to be whether that's dog training whether that's filmmaking whether that's photography skateboarding home design the list goes on and the coolest thing about masterclass is you're learning from truly the best did I say skateboarding well I I mean, talking about Tony Hawk is there to teach you how to fucking skateboard. How cool is that? Martin Scorsese, one of the greatest filmmakers of all time, teaching you how to make film. That is incredible. You uh, have the lovely Robin Roberts. Uh, let's see, Neil uh, Neil Tyson, Tyson DeGrasse, Anna Winter, uh, Gordon Ramsay, how to cook. Oh, my God, this is amazing. Anyways, I've used it. I've used it long before they were a sponsor of the show. It makes a great gift. Try and be a master in your class, whatever it is. I highly recommend you check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass. And as a vile file listener, you get 50% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is masterclass.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off masterclass. Yeah, I don't know if you know this, but Madonna is an American icon in more ways than one. She's the embodiment of the American dream, a woman from humble beginnings who transformed herself into the material girl and became not only the biggest pop star on the planet, but a movie star and the world's number one trendsetter. And in all new season of Wonder is Even the Rich, the host tell a rags the riches story of how Madonna became the queen of pop. What makes, what makes Madonna remarkable is that she stayed on top for four decades, four decades, while countless other pop stars came and went. Listen, a lot of Madonna fans out there, I know I am, and this sounds so fascinating, so be sure to check it out. Listen to the latest season of Even the Rich, The Making of Madonna and on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or you can listen and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus on the Wondery app. Wondery, feel the story. It's weird because it, again, it depends on the person, but I'm like, what, whoever, like, the people that are coming to mind, they're relatively respectful. I know if I asked, like, hey, like, did you hook up with this girl or did you do this or whatever, like, they'd be honest with me Mm -hmm. and they usually are. But then I think it's, it's just more like, it's, it's weird. It's complicated because they're, they generally are nice to me. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't hang out with a guy who was like, actually being mean to me that's not like i have a little bit of (laughs) self-respect but do you not yeah you i feel like you have a lot yeah i have a lot of (laughs) you downplay yourself i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing basically is what i'm saying you wrote a song about my girlfriend told me you wrote a song about logan paul is that accurate am i is my information correct we we don't have to talk about it you slouched out (laughs) one song 10 songs who's to count you've read more than one song Mm -hmm. uh that's (laughs) And have you talked to him about that? Oh, all the, I made him a CD for his birthday with all the songs I wrote about him. Did, oh, well, that was very flattering. Mm-hmm. And he I, was, yeah, no, he he's a he's a, has he, no emotion, so I can do and say whatever I want, and he it's, thinks it's hilarious. We're is still that friends. A good thing. Yeah. You're still friends. Yeah. He has no emotion. Mm, no, uh, I don't think so. I think he has. He's kind of uh, got sympathy down, but empathy is. Uh, 
sympathy he's, but not he's empathy. lacking a little yeah you know like he knows when to feel bad for people and when to be nice but the actual emotions of like you don't think he's like a narcissist do you I'm not a I'm not a psychiatrist, but I I'm really into psychology. I'm just kidding. No, but yeah, no. What? Uh, I have a song called Sociopath that's about him, so <laughs> <laughs> well, what what like all right, so you're you're obviously very self deprecating about like the choices you've made, but you must have learned a ton from this. Like what have you learned the what's the biggest takeaway from interacting and dating Logan Paul? <laughs> like um, what can you say like thanks Logan? I learned this because of your nonsense. Oh, well, according to him, he's like, I gave you so much content. Like, I'm amazing. <laughs> he thinks he's amazing because he gave me so much content. And I, I do. I say, I'm like, thank you so much. You gave me my, some of my best songs. Um, I really appreciate it. And I love, also, I love all his friends. His friends are the best people ever. My, I, one of his best friends is now my actual best friend. I'm like, he's, I talk to him every single day. He lives That's in great. London, but he, and all of his, um, one of his friends just called me earlier and invited me to go to game night tonight. Like I'm like best friends with all of his friends and I love them. So that's great. I gained a lot of cool relationships. Um, I feel like I'm better now at, at navigating when people are lying to me <laughs> or being just like saying shit to say shit. Like he's the kind of guy that'll like, like he just likes to fuck with me. Like he just likes to fuck with people. That's his thing. And it's, it's funny. It's very entertaining. And he'll say things just for the sake of, bullshitting and then you're he kind of expects you to realize that it's not Bullshit. real and you I now and now i'm really good at gauging that with him because like i still we're friends i hang out with him sometimes and like he will still pull the same bullshit and i'm just like mm-hmm, yeah dope how do you spot a liar liar now i mean i just you can just tell by people's demeanor like it it I just don't let myself get caught up in bullshit anymore. And not that I ever was really, really bad at seeing when people were fucking with me, but like, I'm just, I think I'm just really, really good at it. I also, I like, now I'm kind of bullshitting people more. <laughs> so so you learn how to bullshit from Logan. <laughs> and I don't know if it was from him, but yeah. Um, okay. But at, but at the end of the day, if I wanted him to be honest about something, I could just ask him and he'll be honest about it. But it's fun to just like fuck around and, kind of bullshit and lie to each other do you like do you think it's good do you like being staying friends with like how i'm curious how, how would you just do you consider him an ex no we didn't date okay no how long you guys hang out for first time was like a month and then we didn't talk for like a long time and then hung out again for like a couple months didn't talk again for a while hung out again for a couple months didn't talk again for a while who started it? Who started it up? Did you always initiate? Did he? Was it boredom? Yeah, it was usually just like boredom or like the most recent time that it happened, it was like I had just gotten out of something and the night that I, I, I had gotten essentially kind of, it wasn't dating this guy, but I like got dumped over text and I was like, I had, I had seen him for the first, Logan for the first time in a long time at a party the night before and so I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hang out with him and like whatever. So then I just, I, <laughs> Start it up again. I don't know if I'm gonna want to put this in, but I went to a, a party with my friend, and I saw him, and I went up to him and I said, "Logan, I just got dumped, and I need you to have sex with me tonight because I you're the only person that I can hook up with and not feel anything for." And he was like, "Okay, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> and he probably asked for a thank you afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it was yeah. Anyway, I just I like every time. I'm the kind of person that if I am hung up on someone and then something bad happens, I will go right back to the last person that made me feel anything and hook up with them to get over that person. And then I'll probably get stuck on them again. And then I'll, they'll dump me and then I'll go back to the other person. <laughs> After you hooked up, did, did it work what you hoped would work? Like, did you feel better, worse, the same? Oh, I did not cry about the other guy until I stopped hooking up with him again. Until you stopped? So you almost hook, hook like me. it was like it like it like puts my emotions for the other person on pause. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, I don't have to deal with it right now because I'm like doing this little stupid thing that I know I shouldn't be doing. And then you stop that and then it all and then you had to deal. And with it. And then I was like, oh, God, fuck. Yeah. How did you deal with it? Um, I didn't. <laughs> You're still dealing with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's like not it wasn't. We can talk about it. I'm really good at helping out in these situations. <laughs> No, I mean, I, I just talk to people that know the guy that did, it's like, it's a complicated story, but 
I talk to people that know him and they're like, you dodged a fucking bullet. Like, don't worry about it. And Does so that I'm make not. you feel better? Because that happens a lot, right? Like I'll have friends that come to me and this happened and people will say that all the time. Like you dodged a bullet, but unfortunately that often in that moment doesn't really make that person feel good. Or does that make you feel good? Because like, I don't know. It's a weird thing people always say, but you're just like, I wanted to be bulletproof. No, but I know I wouldn't have been happy with this guy. He like, I know that he already, I already felt like I had to like walk on eggshells with him and like be like a caretaker. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to do that at the end of the day. Um, he was really cool, but yeah. And it's just, it's weird when like someone, so he basically started dating someone else and didn't tell me. And that's why things ended. And then like having to see that on the internet is like re what really gets to you. It's like, sure. I don't want to see that please. And like, you can't escape it. Like it'll just be in random places. Yeah. So. It's uh, do, uh, how, how big do you think your ego is? My ego? Yeah. I have a big one. Like um, just no, no, ju no judgment space here. Like we all, I mean, we all do, but how do you, <sighs> it's gotta be tough. Like you get a lot of attention. You're talented. You're good looking. You're on the internet. People follow you. It's, it's, it's a bugaboo to try to control our egos. Well, I will tell you, I'm very grateful because I was bullied when I yeah. was growing up. Oh, I had a, I got a nose job when I was 16. I had a big ass honker okay. in the middle of my fucking face. <laughs> and, uh, I was, I was just a tall, skinny, lanky, awkward little girl. And, uh, everyone fucking just hate not hated me but like people were just assholes to me i never it was really really hard for me to fit in um and when i started making soundcloud covers like everyone would just make fun of me for that i started posting original music everyone would make fun of me for that and then it turned from like oh she's like so weird to oh my god she thinks she's so cool because she has a song and i'm like okay well i can't fucking win with you goddamn people and then it was like when i got a nose job i was like oh she got a fucking nose job it's like well you guys all told me it was ugly so i got it <laughs> fixed for you what do you want me to do um so yeah i'm like i feel like i was so insecure for most of my life sure, that yeah. once i finally got confidence and was like okay whatever it took me so many years and then it was like you, you have to fake it for a little while and then like being on instagram and everything like i would like facetune my photos and like try to be cute and then i just recently not recently in the past like year or so i think also quarantine really helped me kind of like solidify my confidence i was spending so much time with myself going back to therapy figuring out everything that's wrong with me mentally and everything and now i feel like i'm pretty fucking confident like i don't i don't know i I'd say my ego is probably pretty big right now, but that's okay. But also, like, it's not—it's not from like a place of like I'm a fucking better than everyone. It's like I used to literally hate myself so much, and now I don't. So now I'm like proud of that. Yeah, so I'm like proud of not only that, but also like learning to be proud of my accomplishments and who I am without feeling bad about it. Like not being like, oh well, I can't be a bitch about how I'm doing this, like because other people aren't. But it's like I spent so long not being proud of that and not thinking I was anything great. And now I'm doing that. So yeah, I was, I, I was bullied in middle school and as a result, and I got cool in high school. And mm. then I found like, I, I almost overcompensated, overreacted. And then yeah, I think then I, was, like I wasn't a bully at all, but like I was kind of a dick mm -hmm. sometimes. And you look back and then, yeah, so it's, it's a process. I also think that our egos are superpowers. We just have to learn there. I don't know. Do you like comic books at all? No. <laughs> okay. Well, like, yeah, it's a superpower that we can't control. Okay. Like imagine okay. like being Superman and not knowing how to control his powers. And yeah. every time Superman got angry, his powers would just pop off. And so like he's Superman, he's great, but like he knows how to control his powers. Imagine Superman being teased and picked on or needing to feel good or having attention. And that, because like, our egos can do great things. It's a motivating thing. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming like when you get your heart broken, your egos bruised, you're out there writing music and you're being super creative. And it's like, you might see uh, someone, you know, who's also in the business. You're like, I'm, I can do what she's doing. I can do what he's doing. I can write. Like, that's a great power to have to like, it's work ethic. It's challenging. But like sometimes when like we get hurt and we don't know how to control it, our egos will just like fuck with us or sometimes hurt people around us because, you know, we'll be sensitive and we'll say or do things to really like get back on them because we're we're just so butthurt about mm -hmm. our or just we're so hurt with our egos. It's um, it's a yeah, I've, I've decided it's a superpower. I also okay. talk shit a lot about ego a lot like and I like thought about it because I'm like I feel like I'm giving ego a bad name but like 
it does so much for me. It's mm -hmm. it's helped me uh, and get over a lot of things. People with the biggest egos a lot of times are the most successful. Cause, and also, like, it can make you kind of, like, charismatic and shit. Yeah. Like, because you just have the confidence. And, know what it, like, it's not fun to hang out with someone who's super, super, like, insecure about everything about themselves. And I know that because I was not fun to hang out with. When I was, like, 17, I don't know how I had friends. I was so, like... I would cr go home crying every time we would go out. And like, I, there was one night I was crying in my bathtub and I, there was like two inches of water in it, and I was like, I'm going to fucking drown myself. And my friends were like, Olivia, please get out. And I was like, they had to take me out of my bathtub. And then my neighbor, who, my, this girl was I'm, I'm friends with, used to be my neighbor and i put on like a towel and went walked over to the her house in a towel and then i laid down in the middle of the street and was like i want someone to run me over when i was really really drunk but i'm like why did they fucking hang out with me when i acted like that like that's crazy that's crazy that's, good. that's what friends are for but now now when i get drunk i'm happy because i don't have the the demons of being insecure um yeah so i don't know i i think that's it, that's an interesting perspective of saying it's a superpower those yeah. pe some people that I know that have really, really big egos are actually like fun to be around. Yeah, it's just you just have to learn how to control but, it. But then it's like the difference between someone that just has like a, a big ego versus someone who like is actually really insecure and then acts like an arrogant prick just to, to overcompensate. Yeah, for not, that so happens then is all that, the time. Is that still having an ego? Or well, is we that, all have egos. I mean, but like a big ego. Well, that would be, you know, well, I think what, yeah, when you describe it, what's like someone comes like i think the biggest sign of someone's confidence talking about confidence is the ability like i think from my i just met you you seem like a very confident person because you are so open to talk about your insecurities like that takes confidence like it's how many people do we meet who you'll ask like oh what's an insecurity what's this and they're like nothing i don't know nothing really bothers me and they'll say something like you know like my biggest weakness is i'm a perfectionist yeah. you know shit like that and it's just like so yeah full of shit and all you see is this kind of like um you know they boast and they're constantly like doing things for attention and validation and then you, they never like to talk about their insecurities and when they do it's not, an it's not an insecurity that you see. It's like the hardest insecurities we talk about is ones that we're all aware about. Like yeah. we all see the insecurity. Everyone knows about it. It's the elephant in the room. And then someone's like, oh, like, what's your insecurity? They're just like, you know, I'm, I'm not good at spelling, you yeah. know? And it's just like, no one gives a shit, you know? Yeah. Like, and, uh, and I think, you know, our ego sometimes will stop us from recognizing that and getting that con like our egos again can give us confidence but they also can stop us from showing our confidence because we're we're just not able to talk about our insecurities and mm -hmm. i think like you for example like that's the impression i'm getting from you is that you might have insecurities but you're overall very confident person yeah and i feel like i just had to kind of learn to talk about my insecurities because i was like writing about them and putting it on the internet for everyone to see like it's I was, hard to do yeah i was i was writing songs and about all of this shit that i'm feeling and that's i can't be like oh actually no i don't feel like that i just wrote it because i wanted to like what? like how would i i don't know so i think i just have learned how to talk about it and um be okay with talking about it also i know that i have a lot of like young girls that look up to me and i when I was younger and I was on the internet and I would see people like if someone talked about something that I was insecure about, it would immediately make me feel so much fucking mm -hmm. better about myself. So I will, if, if someone else like is relating to me and I know that a lot of people do relate to me, that's like the number one thing I get. Like you're so relatable. Mm -hmm. I relate to your music. I relate to what you post on social media, whatever. So I feel like it's just a benefit for everyone. If I talk about shit, because do you ever find that people you have tried to use you being honest about your insecurities against you? Where like you say, hey, this bothers me or this makes me feel a certain way. And then whether it's like a troll or something. Um, Definitely internet trolls. But then it's at that point, it's like, I mean, and I used to really, really let that stuff get to me. And now. How are you better with that? Because I feel like it's something we all struggle well, with. And it's all relative. Like whether you're Olivia Bryan who has all these followers or you're like Jill. <laughs> or down just, the street Jill. <laughs> who has 600 followers like trolls exist all over the place well what i realized is like they are who like who are they who the fuck are they like they're, I know, but they have zero followers i know but <laughs> but you genuinely have to be like also the what i always tell my friends that are like in social media is like the people that are commenting mean shit on your videos or mean shit on your posts whatever 
everyone that I know, like all of us normal people out here, we wouldn't comment something mean on someone's post. Like we just wouldn't. Like I don't know any single person that would take their time to go on the internet and comment something mean. Maybe they'll send it in the group chat and say, look, this guy, look at this fucking guy. But we're not going to comment, take the t- time out of our day to comment or message someone and be an asshole. Like that's that takes a special kind of person that is so deeply insecure and sad about their own life that they are trying to make themselves feel better by going on the internet and saying all this shit. Also, they may be the loudest fucking voices because they won't shut the fuck up and they will just keep going and saying things and whatever. And they probably make multiple accounts when you block them and they're crazy. But the majority of people, like what you get a couple hate comments and the rest are nice. And then there's, besides people just commenting, there's however many people like saw it and just said nothing and probably still liked it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're they're the loudest, but they're not the majority. Just because they're the loudest doesn't mean that they're the most important or or the, the thing that everyone agrees with so that you're right it's just it seems like you have a good handle on it and i've i've even myself have struggled with it like you i mean it's especially when they like it when i'm having a bad day and i see something and it's like just gets me just the right way like it's just they know exactly the right thing also like like, i know i'm not supposed to give you any any attention but (laughs) But, like it's all i can think about i used to reply to everyone now i just block i used to reply to everyone and be like well i don't understand why you would say that about me because whatever Uh, kazzy kazzy david in her book and i I, i'll I'll, she's a friend and i'll occasionally text i'll occasionally text her to remind her just how how like it's one of the best things she's ever said to and she wrote in her book so she said it to everyone but it's something that's really helped me and she said uh, any response to an internet troll, no matter how good it is, is insane. Yeah. And it's so true. Mm-hmm. And I've, since having her say that, I've had weak moments where I'm like, I know, like, I know this I can, is a good I can comeback. disprove this. I know. <laughs> and I've, sometimes I've done it. And I, yeah. it, but it's true. You never feel better because all they want is the validation, is, that, yeah. is the attention. And to and know that you tough. saw it, even just to, like, they just want to get in your head. And also, especially like since, so I used to, for like a really long time, I was like, I would not tell anyone that my songs were about Logan or that I ever talked to Logan because I was so scared. He has so many crazy fucking fans. People find out everything. And even if they don't know exactly what's happening, they like think they do because they they like are spies. Mm. And a a lot of the guys that I've um, like, not like dated and not like actually dated, but dated, have fan bases like that and it's always terrified me so i never wanted to talk about it but then ever since i started like just being like okay whatever everyone everyone fucking knew everyone knew i went on his podcast and still didn't say that it was about him we like pretended like it wasn't but he knew yes he knew i don't know him at all but (laughs) i feel like he's the type of guy who would want people to know you wrote a song about he's never he's never cared he's never cared it was always like me being like no please don't post that please don't tell anyone whatever like i never want anyone to know and then now that i do talk about it I get so many comments every single day like you just want to use him for his clout and you're a fucking liar. and then they'll like DM me and be like you shouldn't talk to him ever again blah, blah blah like he has the craziest internet troll fans and ever since I started talking about it I've been dealing with that's been the craziest shit I've been dealing with is like those people and I'm like <laughs> Are- but it's it's kind of taught me to like ignore it because they just there's no like there's just it's funny to me now I just like look at them and I laugh do you think you will continue to write songs about men you date yeah, fuck yeah. Okay. Of course. And if a guy goes on a date with you and, and, and he's like, hey, are you going to write a song about me if it doesn't go well? Will you be like, fuck yeah? Well, it, it uh, don't flatter yourself. It's like, I it takes a lot for me to actually write a song about someone. Okay. Like, I've dated, fully dated guys and never written a song really about them. So I could picture some sort of narcissistic guy just be like, I just want to write a song. Yeah, about they me. Take me and just, just do terrible fucking song. shit. <laughs> and you just be like, I'm just trying to push your buttons. No, it takes, it takes a really special kind of guy okay. to, to get me to let, write, especially cause like I, I have a, a tattoo. This is a tally mark of the three guys that I've written my songs about. Um, there's only been three and okay. I've obviously, there's been a lot more than that in and out of my life. But those three, I wrote like, fucking like 20 songs about each of them you know what i mean like i i go through it's like each era is like inspired by a different person which is so like ew i hate that i'm like relying on like 
like misfortune in relationships to inspire me but that it's working I, right now whatever i don't give a fuck failure is a great i mean i've you know people always like why do you give relationship advice or whatever like and i was just like i don't know i've been through the fucking ringer i have learned yeah. i've uh you make mistakes and like you do it through through songs and I always, I always get it really, I don't want, I personally don't want to hear from people, whether it's through music or advice or whatever, when someone says to me, like, I've always had it good. I've only been in this one relationship. And it's perfect. She's perfect. Yeah. I don't really have anything like, you know what you should do? Here's the advice I have for you. They're just like, get it right. <laughs> Date yeah. someone perfect. Oh, how is that helpful? Like, yeah. um, you can always learn from, from those things. When you, when you ever, when you find love, do you, you if. if you find love, how do you envision it's going to be? Like, how do you want to be at, like, what's your dream scenario? I am more worried that I will not find someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with. I am very worried about that because I the, am crazy. I've had that fear. I think it's a relatable fear, right? Is it not a relatable fear? Yeah, yeah. totally. I think it's like a universal fear. Yeah. For me, I don't know if you relate. Like I've, you know, I, I've been in love. I had my heart broken, you know, like my first relationship. And it was so uh, like, you know, it was the rom-com stuff. Mm -hmm. And for me to get over that, I had to like learn and, put, and like be analytical and process. And at least a concern for me was, and then I went on a TV show and, you know, mm -hmm. it's all the, like dramatized. I mean, the, obviously, the best yeah. way to find love is to the go best, on yes. The Bachelor. Yeah, of course. That's why everyone goes on. Yes. You go on and it's you only, say, I am here love. because yeah. I am ready for marriage. <laughs> I was truly afraid after all that that I'll never, I'll never know. Like I thought, I, I, my fear was. Because if, if I'll the just surefire like, way to find love didn't work for you, The Bachelor. Exactly. The how, bachelor, what will work? How it will work. But I was, what, I was like, I always like would meet a bunch of, a bunch, like kind of way you described. I meet all these nice girls, hot girls, and like have these good dates. And sometimes you hook up and sometimes you don't. And it's like, it's cool. Like I don't, but I don't know if I love you. Like, you know. I want to be fucking obsessed with someone that I, it makes me want to die. And I want to be able to write <laughs> so many songs about them. And I want to, I want to go on adventures. I want to travel the world. I want, I, I need someone to be at least as successful, if not more successful than me, because men get really emasculated in relationships, whether they will admit it or not. They feel uncomfortable if the girl is like doing better than them. And it, it, that success is, you know, relative, it's, it's relative, yeah. but I want someone that is at least like ha has the same kind of mindset with me as me about work and success and <sighs> life goals and all of that stuff. Could you fall in love with, let's say the best high school teacher in America loves his job passion the teacher best. of the year award he's crushing it you know financially obviously teachers we know are underpaid and sometimes underappreciated but he's the fucking best he's like coach of the year he's I mean if uh, could if you do he that was, if or he does, was it, like, does it need to be someone like no if we were really compatible and like that's fine and as long as he's not like insecure and emasculated by the fact that I'm going on tour and doing all these crazy things and hanging out with random hot people all the time and as long as he's secure like i don't care what he just the has job to be able to is necessarily and not, yeah know. and and, that, and that's what i've realized a lot of the time is guys that aren't in the entertainment industry don't get it they don't yeah. understand like i have a lot of guy friends that are, uh, people might think are like really hot guys but i'm not attracted to them at all and they are not anything that someone i'm dating should worry about but like being in this world is like probably very it's just unknown to a lot of people so i've had more success with people that are in the entertainment oh, industry and sense, understand yeah. my life i guess do you like um like when you said the confident guys how what is a confident guy to you and do you like guys who are protective and can they be both do they have to be uh, confident to be protective or can a guy be overprotective while showing an insecurity does that make sense i i mean there's definitely like a level of of protectiveness that you want like if someone's you know being an asshole you want them to like come to your come to your rescue sure. the classic thing but uh there's definitely like if i'm doing something that's totally fine and normal and they're getting like overprotective about it then that's that's an insecurity thing that's like a a trust problem so i don't know um 
it just really i i really don't ever want to say like this is what i want out of a relationship or like this is the kind of person that i want because i don't know until i meet someone i've definitely had a type what's your um, type i do you yeah do you have a physical type or a personality like type? both i like pr- like not like super super muscular guys but like tall pretty muscular like like guys that really like to work out and play sports or whatever um so athletic athletic guys yeah and then but i've just dated a lot of like youtubers and internet boys and they cooked up with a lot of internet boys <laughs> my are friends they, are they generally athletic yeah okay my friends make fun of me so much like it's insane they make like i i'm the butt of every joke but yeah that's my type so i i would love to move on from that and i'm not saying like i only want to date those kinds of guys but i just i i just my main thing is that i just want to be obsessed with someone because it, it has to inspire to, me. But what if we talk? What if I told you? Because we've learned this on the show that sometimes the initial spark is a red flag. Yeah, and I not know. necessarily. I know that. That's why. <laughs> that's why I'm here. So, but how do you? How do you? How are we gonna get you to know the? Di- and I don't know the. Di- I don't necessarily have an answer because I love that. I want to be a. I. I'm. I'm obsessed with my girlfriend. I'm 100% obsessed, but at the same time, uh, like I definitely didn't feel that spark at first, probably because I was kind of void. From if ha- I don't love. feel the but spark, like, do I will not first? hang out with them again. <laughs> like I just don't, I don't want to waste my time and I don't, I So need, you have to be obsessed right away. But I'm also like, when I go on dates and stuff, like I'm, I'm really, really sarcastic. I'm, I, I like to kind of fuck with people and like, feel them out a little bit sure, yeah. and like say really crazy things to see if they laugh or if they're uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you just need a sharp like, witted guy. Yeah. So I, I, it doesn't necessarily have to be like that crazy spark, but like I have to know that they're going to be the kind of person that I can get along with and be weird and psychotic with. So, and I, I, I don't have like different personalities, but there's a lot of like, I can be really, really emotional, but I can also be just, I just want to have fun a lot of the time mm-hmm. and I need someone that can kind of handle both of those things. And I'd like to feel people out. And a lot of times I'll, they just aren't, we're not vibing like that and I'm not going to hang out with them again. So, but you might not be obsessed right away. I might not be obsessed right away, but they have to at least have that thing. It's like I, that thing that I've, you can't I've heard Nick someday and like, you know, 10 years from now or five years from now or three years when you're going to, wh- whoever you end up with, you're, you'll be surprised. You'll be like, I never would have thought. Do you like that idea no. or not? You don't no, like that because idea. Because I don't want to end up with someone boring and lame that I'm like. Oh. Well, no, they'll be exciting. You, they'll be, no, they'll, who, who said anything about boring and <laughs> because lame? Because I just said I want someone exciting and you're saying that I'm not going to have that because it's going to be something I don't no, expect. It might not, yeah, but in a totally, <laughs> You're going to end up with someone really boring. It's going to be an accountant. That, for the record, I did not say that. No, um, I, I like, for example, like I used to always date um, women who were kind of like what you're describing like i love to challenge right so i would equate that to right off the bat just you know i'd love those little games and they would kind of challenge me and i kind of took that as the challenge so to speak and so much that i didn't realize at the time but like their challenge was kind of you know like challenging my ego and so then i would get attracted to the challenge so to speak rather than them and then like for example like natalie she never did that you know it wasn't boring at all but but it wasn't the like stupid games it wasn't the games and the challenge as the relationship evolved was more like just kind of conversations and then when that when she would challenge me about something it's like either this bothers me or i think you could i don't like how you did that etc etc it became less of a competition and more of like I got, I got, felt better about it. I don't know, but it was just, it was, I just saw it differently. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, I had to date like the same girl 20 different times. That's and, me like, with, yeah. you know, like we all, fi- like we do that. Like it's normal. Mm-hmm. And you always tell ourselves like, no, this one's different. No. And everyone's just like, no, it's just no. like, it's a different hair color. And you're like, L- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and I wouldn't even date different hair colors. It would be, <laughs> I'll be brunettes. Um, a couple of blondes. Um, all right. This has been great. Olivia, before we let you go, are you down to play a fun game called Do You Know Me? Sure. It's, <laughs> <laughs> don't. I'm sound. obviously so excited. I'm excited. Uh, I appreciate the low energy. Uh, it's really simple. It's called Do You Know Me? Or I'm going to ask. I already said that. <laughs> I'm going to ask you questions. Okay. 
Uh, has Olivia done this? Has Olivia ever thought this, done this? Uh, don't answer right away. We're going to guess. Oh, okay, okay. If we know you. Okay. Hence. Got it. The name. Simple yes or no questions. Answers are fine. Anecdotal stories about your answers are welcomed, but not okay. expected. Okay. Question number one. Has Olivia ever paid for a psychic reading? Yes. Yes. 100%. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It's so funny. All of my friends are going to a psych, the same psychic right now. And they're all, one of my friends paid her $700 to be her like psychic fourth a month. And like, she does. But I haven't gone to her because I'm scared. I'm so scared that I'm going to go to a psychic and they're going to tell me exactly everything that I don't want to hear. Like, He's not the guy for you. Stop talking to him. You're not going to end up with him. You are the worst dater ever. You need to do this. And I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I'm having my little stupid fun right now. So I do don't Do you believe want... in psychics? Yeah, it, to an extent. I think there are definitely people that are like scammers out there. But, I, but I've had some experiences with people that are, and people that I know have had really crazy experiences where stuff is real. Um, and sometimes I feel like I'm a little psychic. Like I have, How so? I just am like intuitive and I actually did a, a a YouTube video with these girls, the Psychic Twins. They are these like they're like in their fifties or sixties, I think, and they like live together still, and they're twins, and they're like so like I actually like I believed everything that they said to me, and I, they predicted I was gonna play Coachella, um, and I it didn't Coachella didn't happen, but like I did get booked for it, and um, are they gonna book you back? I'm not allowed to speak on the subject. Oh, well, congrats, <laughs> <Yeah. Shut up. laughs> Okay. Um, I should not <laughs> confirm anything. I I'm cannot just... confirm or deny anything. But um, they predicted a lot of stuff, and it, I really was like, okay, hell yeah, Max, you were there, right? Yeah. With them. They. Um, I walked into the room, and I had just lost one of my best friends, and she like stopped Olivia in the middle and looked at me and was like, um, "Somebody's coming for you. Like, did you just lose somebody in a car accident?" And I was like, "Oh shit." I was like, "I, I can't do this. I'm gonna start crying here." Yeah. Um, no, like I believe in that shit. And they told me that they think I have like mild psychic abilities. And I was like, I believe you. When I was a little kid, I literally thought I had superpowers, thought I was like a fairy and a mermaid. I just got a fairy and a mermaid tattooed on me because of my weird obsession as a child. And I thought I was psychic. I was like, I'm literally psychic. My grandma's in, like into astrology and I'm really into astrology. So I just like think that I have this weird like intuitive thing. Okay. Things. But yes, I have. I'm, I'm afraid of psychics. I, I'm skeptical, but I also, there's a part of me. That they're going to tell you like, some crazy you- shit. I don't want to go have you go down a rabbit hole because I know you said I you think about death. But like, do you want to know? No. Neither do I. No. Fuck no. Do you want to know? I like the mystery. Yeah, I don't want to know. Mm-mm. I'd be too afraid. Mm-mm. Has Olivia ever quit a job? Yes. <laughs> I don't think so. Like, and just for clarification, she's like, I quit. <laughs> yeah, like, I think there's got to be some, like, situation where you're, like, growing up and, like, working at the mall or something like that when you're growing up. Where, I don't like, mean, like, you resign. Just, you're like, I'm out of here. Like, quit, like, when you walked into work, you weren't expecting I'm quitting, but you're like, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> it was like, then she'd have every job she's ever had before this. I see the difference. Resigning versus quitting. I think once when you were, like, younger. Yeah, like a mall job. I'm going to say no. no. She saw it through. She finished the shift, so to speak. Well, plot twist. I've never had a job. <laughs> <laughs> I started music when I was 15, so uh, I, this is my first job. I was an intern in a dress shop when I was eight, and I used to seam rip dresses. That's a job. But I was didn't get paid, and I was eight. <laughs> okay. so, and I didn't it, quit. It is wild to me, like uh, whether it's you or other musicians, when you hear like... Uh, like you're like writing songs and music that came out. It's like, it's, I I couldn't, uh, it's really awesome. It's pretty random. Like when your, your songs that you've come out and the, the like I could, I I was excited when I learned how to ride a bike. I was excited when I learned how to ride a bike too. Well, then you had like a platinum album. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like running track. Um, All right. Question number three. Would Olivia rather give up social media or give up television? You know, let's say yeah. like on a on a personal level, like not like because so, obviously social media is important for your like brand. Yeah, like your entertainment. Yeah, like, thank you know. for yeah. So would you rather wait? Give let's a- let's say that like 
because I, my career is on social media, like someone else could run yeah, yeah, and yeah, post yeah. for me, but I just wouldn't be able to be on Your it. Your career okay. still thrives. Okay, so that's the yeah, question. But Got like it. it's Sunday night, you're mm-hmm. trying to avoid the Monday scaries and you just want to be entertained and you could add to, you know, TikTok or I'm going to say you'd rather give up social media. I agree. I was going to say that, but then you said TikTok and I was like, no, everybody loves TikTok. So I, will- I understand that, but I feel like she's talked about mental health and, and things yeah. like that. And I know it fucks my mental health up. And, you know, like I watched uh, Sex and Life last night and while well, it was like weird, I, like, I still <laughs> went to bed fine. Like I've gone on TikTok and it's just like fucked up my sleep. I don't know. That's just me. I think she'd give up social. Yeah, I would give up social media. But I only because like I wish that I could like I wish I could so badly. And I love TV. Like I, I based that. my last project based on like TV and movies. Like it's like it's called episodes. And it's like about I don't know. Each song like has like a genre of like a TV show or movie that I like related to like production wise. Anyway, so I'm like love, love, love TV and Stupid What's your TV favorite shows? shows? Right now I'm rewatching Modern Family, which is mm. absolutely elite. So well written. The characters are incredible. New Girl. <laughs> fucking love that show. Um, every, I've watched so many TV shows. I'm definitely more into TV shows than movies because I, I like to binge. Like I would rather watch like eight seasons or something than like one movie and it's over. Um, Vampire Diaries I watched when I was younger. I'm obsessed with that show. Gossip Girl. Um, I just rewatched Gossip Girl. I've seen right it like now. four times. It's crazy. I, there's uh, literally so many shows I love. I can't even. I was, um, Nathan like for you. Is, Nathan for you is the best. best. Um, like stupid shit. Like, like the Eric Andre <sighs> show is fun to watch when I'm just like. His wanna... follow through is amazing. Dude, every like there's yeah. T- I couldn't go up to you ever. Okay. Has Olivia ever spent over a thousand dollars at Target in one? Shot. I mean, there's an option for a hundred here. I'm like, you could blink and shot, spend a hundred dollars yeah, on a Target. Uh, I'm gonna say five hundred. I mean, thousand. Sorry. Have you gone to Target? Uh, I'm just gonna go to Target, and you walked out a thousand dollars later. She's thinking about it. I don't even know if I. No. I don't remember. So, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't remember. Interesting. Amanda picked these questions, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I didn't pick these questions. Well, I just, <laughs> there's like a, this kind of like could be described it's, as potentially like sexist because like, can Olivia name six NFL teams? Like, I'm like, as a guy, I don't, it's what a prayer for, like, I, I don't, I make no assumptions on your interest in sports or lack thereof. Uh, yeah. Can Olivia name six NFL teams? Before you answer. Six NFL teams. She's from Napa. I'm going to say yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I have so many friends in the NFL. Of course. Okay. I'm just kidding. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm just I'm a, I have like two. Uh, <laughs> I know like three of them. Maybe. We're going to need you to confirm. <laughs> um, 49ers, the Raiders, the Chargers, uh, the Giants. Rattling them off. All right. Uh, we, we, oh, we believe, okay. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You can keep going. The Buccaneers. Yeah. Steelers. Uh, That's six. Does... Uh, Olivia know her Uber rating and what is it? No. I think Olivia's friends have ruined her Uber rating. I think I think you have like a medium low. It's rating. always the friends. Dude. My friend, I, I bought, I got, so my friend Kelsey's banned from Uber because she was using her grandma's I'm credit card by Uber. accident. Like she, it was, she was on her like family account. She didn't realize that it was connected to like her grandma's credit card and her grandma didn't know that she was using it. So she reported it as all like fraud. So then Kelsey's account got banned. Anyway, so she had to use my Uber account and she was at a gay bar with my friend and she takes a drink out with her and goes and sits in the Uber with the drink, spills it everywhere. The Uber was like, and of course it's on my account it's like olivia brought alcohol into my car and spilled it everywhere i'm like oh i didn't do that and then i had to like you would think uber would come up with something to like like you're responsible like you know sometimes you might call an uber for someone and and then that's all on you but also but (laughs) i had an uber account that got hacked i can't use uber anymore because it's linked with my phone number so unless i get a new phone number i've not been able to call an uber actually i can't get an uber now either because they won't let me update my credit card information oh, so shit. i'm stuck with lyft it's yeah. walking wandering aimlessly oh i learned this today don't ever plug your phone in with their 
chargers and don't ever put your phone on like one of those chargers because it's super easy for anyone to buy the technology where it goes both ways. They can download all your information off your phone. Just fun fact. So don't ever. I always do I that because my so phone's like so always dying. So do I. <sighs> which is why I like just PSA Great. for everyone Great. and and you especially. I have to go delete everything. Um, yeah, don't ever use an Uber charger. They're probably mostly fine, but they're, it's becoming a bigger, bigger scam. I found out today with someone who knows what they're talking about. And if someone don't let someone put their phone on top of your phone, because they can that there's technology that allow them to download your data. All, your whole phone. I don't like. I don't even want to know these things. Like I would just rather be ignorant in life and just, or just don't la, charge la, your la, phone. La, la. Get a middle middle Mophie. Get one of those like no, portable chargers. No, they're ugly. Okay. I used to have one. Has Olivia one. ever lived alone? I don't even know if she lives alone now. Um, yeah, she lives. She's lived alone. She's a rock star. Like she's had to be independent. I don't think so. I think family or friends or dudes. I've never lived with a dude. Well, a gay dude, my best friend Drew, but never with like a guy like that, um, like that I was dating or anything. Um, uh, yeah, I've never lived alone. Technically, I, I just bought a house, but my friend Quinn is still like kind of living with me right now. So I'm gonna hopefully live alone soon. At some, not like that I'm kicking her out, but like <laughs> I, I will live alone in that house at some point. L- living um, alone is the best. I, I didn't live alone. I always had room, I had good roommates and I was kind of afraid to live alone. And then, yeah, and then afraid. my girlfriend and I broke up and I was kind of like, Oh, what's this going to be like? And like two days in, I was like, this is awesome. Like there's no, are you guys watching this or can I do this? You're just it, but it's so freeing for me. I've always like, for some reason wanted my friends to live with me and not pay as much money. So like I'll pay like double what all of them are paying combined and get the master bedroom. And then I don't feel like I have to like ask them before I do thing. I mean, if it's something like about with their stuff, but everything else, it's like, no, I, I hear my you. house. So like, I hear you. I, can I was do the same I want. person. So just... then it was like vibes. I don't have to fucking. And, and then I was, I was always living with my best friends. I've definitely had like drama with roommates before and stuff, but I'm scared to live alone because I, I self isolate. Like I'm either the life of the party and like love partying and so much fun. Or like, I will literally not want to talk to anyone, not want to leave my house, not want to hang out with anyone. And not in like a, not even like, Oh, I'm really depressed. It's just like, I like to be at home and I like to be alone. But my friend Quinn, who's living with me right now, she like we like cross paths every once in a while but like i like it's basically like i live alone like i walk around the house naked and play my music really loud and all that stuff so are you an ambivert introvert extrovert i'm an extroverted introvert <laughs> in what way How you- like i love socializing in the right settings sure um but if it's not the right setting. I literally can't be there. And I ne- always need to recharge at home. Like I always have to have my alone time. I like to be alone. Like if I'm with people all day, I won't also want to go out that night. Like I'll, I'll, I need to be alone and then I'll go and like have my little moment. And then I really, that's like am, right, right in the, you're right in the middle. Mm-hmm. My Final mom question. told me it was called extrovert introvert, but whatever. It's amb- ambivert, it's like ambivert. ambidextrous. Like you're sure. both, you know, both what, ways. Whatever you are. You're, you're, you're well, your mom's right. We'll just, you're right. <laughs> Final question. Again, Amanda picked this out. Has Olivia ever been streaking? No. But you, you're like, okay, well, let me, what? No, not in, no, not in your house. It has to be like, we're going streaking and like. <laughs> that didn't say flash. That's not the question. I feel like. Who hasn't done that? <laughs> Well, like, who goes streaking anymore? Like, I've definitely, like, gone skinny dipping. Me and my friends have all jumped in my pool naked, holding hands. And we've, like, I, like, have been at parties with my friends and, like, accidentally shown everyone my non-existent boobs. Like, it's... uh, I don't know. It's... I'm, 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 like, my friends know me as the person that's always naked. So... Is that streaking? What's your policy on nudes, given... When a dating situation or... Like if I big- feel like sending one, I will, but don't fucking ask for one. <laughs> okay. No. Also, like, and yeah. One time when I was in high school, I accidentally posted an ass pic on my story that I meant to send in to a high guy. School? I was like 15. Ugh, child porn. 
Oh, wow. Ooh, so, so bad. Well, we learned from Lala that you should watermark your nudes, and that's yeah. probably maybe the greatest thing I learned. Of watermark? Having, she watermarks her nudes. So she'll, like, take a nude, like, this is, I'm feeling good, I'm sending it to my guy, and she'll put his name in a watermark Oh, on so it. know who... So, like, if it ever gets out, it? she yeah. fucking knows who did it, and, like, yeah. it's fucking genius. That's fair. No, no, I accidentally posted it on my Snapchat no, I know story. That, it was my, it's my own goddamn fault. Whenever she said that, I just, I, I, it's the greatest, it's the smartest thing ever. And I'm sure there's like an app, you just get like a watermark app and just slap it on. Or you just, you on. literally just put like, get a, any, any app that you can put text on a photo, yeah, you just make it really right. small. If you like, Chad, <laughs> <laughs> you did this. Uh, like Olivia, thanks that. so much for coming. So much thanks. fun. Uh, obviously, a lot of people know where they can find you on social, but for those who don't, where can they follow you and all the things social, uh, your music, where can they listen? Obviously um, Spotify, things like that. Let them know. Yeah, music I think is on pretty much everything you can listen to music on. Um, all my socials are just, my Instagram is Olivia O'Brien, my Twitter is Olivia G. O'Brien, and my TikTok is also Olivia G. O'Brien, I think. If you just look up my name, it should come up. It's amazing music. I don't know if you have, if you guys haven't heard it, you should check it out. I, it's really it's really good. I don't bullshit people. It's You're a very talented you. musician, Thank and you. I hope to see more of your music out there. Is as you beat more guys and, and get in situations that <laughs> if help you know you anyone that you think uh i would like let me know and i'll uh maybe yeah. set me up so i can write some songs i'm uh, lacking inspiration right now i don't it's know really if boring. i have anyone <laughs> what's that professional matchmaker you're a, you're a professional yeah, matchmaker so okay cool <laughs> yeah but when you meet them and then you're done writing songs, you can come to me on like an Ask Nick episode and you'd be like, this is what happened. And I'll be like, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll explain why you should just get over it. And, okay, great. And then, and then we'll, we'll be like a team. Mm -hmm. um, thanks so much. I really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Uh, thanks guys for listening. Uh, don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castmedia.com, cast with a K for our Ask Nick episodes. Uh, and we will see you back on Monday. Thanks. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.